Good morning. Do you have an S Corp? Do you have an NLC that you register to be tasked as an S Corp? Then you are required to file a task form 1120S for your S Corporation. Well, there is three ways that you can report or uh, yeah, record a contractor payment on your 1120S. IRS does not have a specific uh, line on Form 1120S that is specifically dedicated for contractor costs. And you might be tempted to put it under line 8, wages, employees wages, but contractors that you paid and you will give 1099 miscellaneous, they should not go on line 8 in my opinion. Because when you uh, file your SSN and you report your task will be held, IRS might try to reconcile your W-2s to what you reported on your line uh, 8. So you if you have too many discrepancies between those two data, you might be added to to explain that. So the best way to report your contractor costs will be to go uh, to put them on another line. We will talk about that. And I will say that maybe the reason why we don't have a specific rules, a specific role for contractor on 1120s will be as a business, as a corporation, IRS expect us to have employees. So on 1120s, we have a role for officers' compensation. So as this, the president of your LLC tasked as an S Corp or uh, as the CEO of your S Corporation, you have line 7 to report your, corp your compensation and the, any other officers working in your business. And we are expected to have employees that we pay um, wages to and they will go on line 8 of 1120s but these days there is many llc's that's as an s corp or many s corp that run from home and many business owners prefer to just hire contractors to perform some tasks without actually having employees working for them so in that case, based on your situation, you have three options to choose from to report those contractors' costs. But remember, anything you, anyone you pay over 600 to as a contractor, you should give out or give him or her a 1099. Otherwise, you won't be able, you may not be able to report that on your 1120S without being penalized by IRS. So, one way you can report a contractor cost on your 1120S is to put it on, on line 9, repair and maintenance fee. So if you hire a professional or a contractor to fix something at your business place, whether you purchase the material or not, or they provided, they will charge you, if they provide the material, they'll charge you for the material and they'll charge you for their labor. If you provide the materials, then they'll charge you for their labor. So, for, those, for that instance, you will put that fee, whether it's just the labor, the contractor labor or the material and the labor charged by the contractor, you'll put that on row 
or line nine repair and maintenance so that's one way if you hire uh, professionals like accountants or a lawyer or a bookkeeper to keep your book you didn't hire them as employees you just um, they are contractors and you hire the service to provide you a service whether keeping your book if that's a bookkeeper or filing your taxes if that's a tax professional or helping you to register your business with the states if that's a lawyer and you pay them those will go on uh, a role that we'll talk about but before that let's talk about someone that you hire not as an employee but as a contractor you hire the service to manufacture a product for you so if you are in the business to produce a good and sell and you hire somebody to produce the good for you here in the United States you didn't teach them how to produce the good they that's their the uh, speciality you hire the them to produce your good well the labor that they charge you will go on the form 1125a cost of goods sold form on line three labor so in that instance you cannot deduct the full labor cost unless you sell all the goods they provide this the, the manufacturer for you so their labor cost will be tied to the product the manufactured product that you put in your inventory and as you sell the product you deduct a part of that labor as well so that line three will have either a contractor labor or your employee labor if the employees that you have, their time, some of their time is tied to uh, production, then you will register that there and you won't put it on line 8 of 1120S. So that labor that is tied to the goods you have in inventory will be deducted as you sell your good. So you need to know the business you are in and the expenses, how the different type of expenses you have to know how to structure uh, uh, your entry and to know how to deduct those expenses. So for instance, I have some products here. Let me just pull one out. And this is manufactured in China. So, and I'm sure how much they charge me, the shipping, the material, and the labor. In fact, the, the material and the labor is just one fee. They don't separate it. They don't separate them. The shipping is separate. But I cannot deduct the full shipping if I don't sell all my product. So that would be tied to my inventory. And the labor, the labor to produce this, and that's a bamboo tower, the labor to produce this is going to go in my inventory as well. And I will deduct all the expenses related to this as I sell the product. Let me point out another example here. I have this flower sack that I sell as a hand towel, individual hand towel, so that you can use it in the bathroom and everyone that uses the bathroom just grab one wipe hand and leave it on the counter for you to put in a bucket until you are ready to wash the used one. People use it only one time. So I sold them myself and I have thought about hiring a, someone I have um, 
co-worker that is very good at sewing and that is my neighbor one of my neighbors and I have thought about if I should buy the fabric and hire her service to sew a bunch of it as well since I couldn't sew a lot at times and but then I didn't go that route even if I use her service or somebody else's service around here but I thought that would be just too uh, the cost would be just too high so in that instance if I hire somebody here to sew some of the towels for me and I purchase the fabric brought it to them to or to him or her and they sew the towers they will charge me for their time so that labor will go online three or from 1125a and i will deduct that labor that's a contractor cost but that's labor that will go there and that will be tied to the towers and as i sell the towers I will deduct a part of the cost, a cost of that contract or, or payment or the labor as well. And if I wanted to charge myself, uh, my um, charge my time used to sew those towers as well, it could easily go on that row of line three from 1125A as well, labor, because it's tied to the products. And as an officer of the business, of my business, and I get compensation, a part of my compensation could easily go on that road if I wanted to go that route. But a lot of time, it's more either the employee or the contractor labor cost that you put on that row line three of 1125a well let's come back to the legal uh, and professional fees if your whatever the contract or cost for your business is it cannot go online nine repair and maintenance fee it cannot go online three labor tied to your inventory line three of form 1125a well, you have the third option, other deduction, line 19 of form 1120S. And under that, uh, that line 19, we have multiple things that can go there, including our legal and professional fees. And as I said earlier, accountant fees that are now your employees, they will go there. Lawyers fees will go there and bookkeepers that you hire their service to keep your books That will go there as well. And when you put those expenses under line 19 other deductions it's good to have an attachment in fact you are required to attach a form a file or a paper to your return where you lease uh, that expenses so you can i mean you might put it as a total 10 out of the nine expenses there but the best option would be to be more specific by grouping those 10 out of the nine total costs by profession so if you have accountant fee you might put accountant fee and put it there if you have lawyer fee you put it there if you have bookkeeper you know you can those contracts or you can group them by professions and list them there with the total amount you pay them but make sure anyone you pay over six hundred dollars to you send them a 1099 and file that with irs as well so those are the three ways that you can report your contractor costs and deduct them on your 1120s s corporation tax return so let's take a look at it because I'm very visual and let's show you those three places on 1099, no, on 1120S. Uh, 
I like to have my computer. at the same level as my screen and maybe putting it here my works better. So we have our 10, our 1120S here, and that's those two uh, lines here, compensation for officers and salary and wages for employees here, and contractors cost should not go there. I don't know if you, where I am here, let's go up a little bit. So line S and eight. Ah, here. So you'll see that if we go to line nine, repair and maintenance here. So that's where you will put those repair. Keep in mind that if you fix something yourself as the officer of your business, you are not going to put your labor costs under repair and maintenance if you do DIY. You'll put the uh, materials that you purchase cost here on line nine, but not your labor. I think it'll just be a part of your compensation on line seven. Your, your, whatever you, your compensation is. So you don't put, you don't charge a labor cost to that. So our line 19 that we talk about is here. And you see an attach statement. So you'll attach a statement to put that here. And when we go up for the cost of goods sold, that will go on the part of income here. It will come from 1125A if you are in the business of manufacturing and selling goods, especially if you sell goods. So, but if you manufacture them, then you'll have all of that there too. So let's first check our line 19 here. And when I'm working on taxes, I like to have IRS publication open to read. And let's see where we can find our line 19. So we have the line 9 here. And line 19. We, we pass it. But line 19 has a lot of things that will go there and we are not going to talk about that in full. I am just keep scrolling past it, but that's this one here on page 18 of instructions 1120. Okay, so line 19 here and let's scroll up a little bit and you will see that We have legal and professional fees here included. So that's that. And as of 11, 
I don't have that open here. And that might be this one, 1125A. Line three, cost of labor. So that will go here on 1125A, cost of labor. So that's where your contractor cost that is related to your inventory will go. Thank you for watching. I'm Afiavi Ojune Lieberman, creators of Lieberman Consulting LLC YouTube channel and owners of Nina Soap. And our website is ninasoap.com. And if you have, um, we have cloth napkin and individual hand towels on our website ninasoap.com so if you like to have individual hand towels available at home for people living in your house to just grab one to wipe their hand when they wash their hand you can shop in our on our website ninasoap.com is going to be in the description and we have kitchen towels cooking towels all natural products and we have our light soap available as well Thank you for watching.